question is from Ryan. Uh, is there any merit to mentioning either at application or interview stage, having previously been a reserve or interviewed at that chambers? Uh, thanks, Ryan. It's a, it's a difficult one. Um, I think certain chambers will feel different uh, than others. Um, and the thing is that the reason it's particularly difficult is because the panels aren't necessarily the same every year. So you may want to get that point across, um, but one panel might think, well, that's just irrelevant. Um, even if it is the same one, they may think, well, that's not relevant because this is an objective process and we're going on, uh, you know, it's a meritocracy, we're going on the applicants that we've got and that's what we're comparing. It happened to me when I applied uh, and I never mentioned it. What I found was um, it, it came up organically sometimes in interview uh, when you get to that stage. So for example, when I walked into the room, um, someone on the panel said, I remember you, or um, during the course of an answer around why are you applying to us, um, it again sort of mentioned in passing um, and knew, you know, you're then saying, well, I, I felt like um, because I got so close, um, I felt like this chambers um, was probably the type of place that could see me being a pupil here uh, and I, I, I wanted to, to try and explore that further. I think that's probably probably about the best that, that I can do with that, Ryan. Uh, I think I'd add that you'd also have to consider how far you got through the application process and, if possible, the reason why you um, fell out of it during it. I think because it's also try it's also good to avoid any um, bad memories that a panel or interviewer may have had previously. So if you don't, if you, for example, um, fell during interview after a particularly bad interview, then it may be worth your while not to mention that. Uh, in the application moving forward, so effectively you actually think the panel have a clean slate to fill you. Yeah, yeah, so uh, it, it's something that you've got to kind of um, take a view on um, and and consider, and you're right, you can put it in the why our chambers question, but it, it still comes back to that same sort of instinctive thing about is this, uh, is this the right way to go about it? The next question we have is from Tangina. Uh, what's the best way of answering, why do you want to train as a barrister? Myself and other students have spoken and uh, spoken to tend to struggle with this question. Uh, well, thanks for the question, uh, Dengina. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I have posted on this before, and I'm in danger when I answer this question of giving people the answer, which I don't want to do. So the first thing I'd say is, have a scroll through some of my previous posts. Um, hopefully it will appear um, below this, this video anyway. Um, but I gave an example where I imagined that the job was for an astronaut rather than barrister. And it was also a key example of a question where you can, and to my mind, should definitely use bullet points. So the word limit there is, I think, 200 words. Don't see it as um, a minimum. Don't see 200 words as a target. Just hammer out half a dozen bullet points that explain why this job um, is, is the one that you want to train for. And some of those bullet points will just be bullet points. They don't require um, any expansion. So for example, uh, intellectual stimulation, that's one bullet point. You don't then need to go on and explain what intellectual stimulation is. I know that, I've read it, I get that's why, um, why you put it down, that's why you want to train to do that job. That, uh, that, that's as simple as it, as it gets really. Um, I think there's too much um, emphasis on um, how to approach this question rather than just understanding that there are only so many ways you can approach this question. and. When you're reading these applications, you see the same answers over and over and over and over again. Very occasionally, there's an answer that's totally off the wall, completely different. That tends to come from people who are looking at it as a second career. Um, so unless that's you, I would suggest you just stick to the, the, the normal reasons, if, if that term applies. 
um, and uh, and avoid avoid the cliches that um, we talked about at the beginning. I think that's probably what I'd what I'd say. Okay, yeah, uh, nothing further to add from me. Um, next question is from Ravi. Does high quality legal experience outweigh mediocre academics? What counts as high quality legal experience? Well, um, Ravi, thanks, thanks for the question. I see that you're a, a Lord Denning scholar um, and um, an Oxford graduate, so uh, I hope um, that um, you don't see yourself as having media academics, because certainly um, your in doesn't think so. Um, but let's focus on legal experience, because it is a big thing. I mean, you, you will have a very strong view on this, I'm sure. Um, I uh, personally had... Um, a, a fair amount of advocacy experience prior to pupillage. And the truth is, in the end, if you have real life experience of the job, that's always going to be impressive, that's always going to be interesting, and that's always going to be relevant. That's more relevant than uh, your degree, that's more relevant than your bar course, that's more relevant than your master's, that's more relevant than pretty much anything else because you're doing the job. So when you say what counts um, as uh, high quality legal experience, to my mind, it's as close as you can get to an advocacy job, if not an advocacy job. So you know, at DWF Advocacy, we do, we do a lot of that. And I was in a position when I applied um, for pupillage where I was often um, turning up at interviews and I had been against members um, of the panel that week, um, in one instance it was that day, in fact we, we travelled to the interview together. So when you look at it in, in that way, having um, legal experience that puts you in court, that puts you in front of judges, that helps you hone your legal argument, that takes you away from textbooks, that's, to my mind, high quality legal experience. That's what's really going to impress the panel. And that's the type of thing that um, I think people should really try and focus on and, and try and get. I think what I would add is that um, if you think that your, your academic performance hasn't been where it ought to have been or could have been better, then you can use your, your uh, experience to supplement that, to show how since graduating that you've become uh, more alert or alive to the issues or more you know or better able to understand and analyze or otherwise analyze the law so i think the two go hand in hand um but i mean inevitably this is a competitive process where um the vast majority of, of applicants will have the benchmark academic credentials and i think regardless of where where you apply to um your, your starting block has to be well do i have the academic background required to make a, a worthwhile application here. Yeah. Cool, hope that helps. <laughs>